The jobs are in crisis mode right now today as companies say no to new hires. They start saying yes to job cuts. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. In today's video, we are going to talk about what's happening with the jobs. We're going to connect that in, of course, with the economy as a whole. I'm going to tell you who's hiring. Let me tell you the examples, the pay differences that are happening right now. Because when you look at the median salary, okay, the median salary, at the last time I checked, it was something around the average in the United States of $34,000. Nobody can live on $34,000. But if you work in one of the engineers at OpenAI, you make around $700, $800, and even more per year. Okay? A huge disparity. Now, keep that in mind. We're going to talk about why. Look at the example of the truckers, right? Where you've got these companies that are saying, we need truckers so badly, we're going to give every incentive possible. We're going to give you 150. We're going to give you 200. We're going to give you more. We're going to give you this and that because we need people. And then what happened? Uh-oh, we don't need you anymore. Jobs cut. These things happen. So watch the industry carefully. Very important, okay? We also have the AI and robot circumstance, which is accelerating. And I'll give you one example of what is happening already. And then we talk about the companies basically slashing and they won't hire. I'm going to tell you all of this today and I'll connect it all in together. The rise of the forever renters. This is becoming a new trend. And unless something drastic changes, will likely be permanent. Americans who would traditionally be homeowners are instead renting. They're sparking new kinds of neighborhoods, changing savings patterns, and even buying different light fixtures. All that in this Wall Street Journal article. The point of it, really, is that I believe what's happening is the United States and the West as a whole, they're becoming part of this renter nation. And what does this mean? It's that people, they don't, can't afford or they don't want the responsibility of home ownership. We are seeing these big buildings being set up, co-op housing. It's like a dormitory where, yes, you've got your own living quarters, but you share some facilities, making it easier. Look, I don't need to deal with anything. Somebody cleans up the kitchen after me. It's a good life. That's what they want. And I think for people who do want that, that's great. But is this what people want or they simply can't afford the alternative. You see the problem when you've got to spend a million dollars, you've got to spend two million dollars to afford a home. It's unreasonable. It's unreasonable for a lot of people, unless you're working as an engineer at OpenAI or as a trucker for one of those companies that hired you for 200 grand and you're still employed. Maybe, just maybe, you'll be okay. But that isn't for everybody. That's what we know. Thinking about quitting your job, so are 39% of U.S. employees. This is unbelievable. Now, obviously, people want better pay. They want to work from home. A lot of companies today are saying, you better come back to the office right now. There is no alternative. But these are people that are living now two hours away from work or maybe even further. And so they're saying, uh-oh, uh, I thought the whole work from home thing was permanent. No. I'm in big trouble. And so these things are kind of happening and that certainly is playing a role, but others are saying, I need more money. I can't afford this. I can't afford the lifestyle I have. I can't afford my bills because uh, of the rising costs. Wayfair CEO, employees need to work longer hours. Now he said some good stuff, but uh, I know this will definitely trigger some other people. And one of those things was, Working long hours, being responsive, blending work and life is not anything to shy away from. And so, you know, the whole work-life balance, I often find that uh, the bosses would say that, meaning when I call you after hours, you better answer your darn phone. That's kind of what it means. But in this case here, I think if you're working for a startup, you have to expect this. If you are trying to grow, if you're trying to be part of something great, you got to have that structure. You can't be someone out there with a family that needs you to be home at five o'clock. It's got to be a different type of environment, a different type of world for these people. But that's the situation. When a company gets to maturity, sometimes the whole dynamic changes. That's important.
I, I think that's really, really something to understand. It depends on the company, depends on the circumstances. And this is from our friends at the World Economic Forum. Is AI making you suffer from FOBO, F-O-B-O? Here's what can help. What is that? Well, let me show you. Here it is. Emerging technologies, including AI, will disrupt jobs and employees' skills in the coming years. Around a fifth of workers in the U.S. say that they fear the AI will make them uh, obsolete, a phenomenon dubbed FOBO. And so this is the kind of situation where I believe this is fear of obsolescence, by the way. You know, you you got to understand this. It's, you know, whether it's AI, robotics, so many things. What we have right now is in the middle of a cycle, we see these circumstances where times change, right? And we go through a period, jobs are, are slashed. But then comes a time in which the economy grows. Things are better. Companies are saying, we need people in that department. Let's hire some more people. But if AI and robotics automation are now doing those jobs over that, let's say that two-year period, we had those open AI engineers creating something. Oh, yeah, we don't need to do that anymore. I've heard many circumstances in financial companies where they get rid of entire departments because... They say, oh, yeah, you know that thing, the manual scanning of this and that? Oh, no, we don't do manual scanning anymore. All we do is have an individual, they just quality checks. That's it. That's all they do. Oh, and by the way, we got rid of that whole department and we sent off the, you know, the lasting parts of it overseas. That's going on now, today, already already uh, you say don't worry because people are going to retool people are going to go into other fields do you think that a person working in a back office at a financial company is suddenly going to be an engineer for open ai the likelihood is slim it's slim and so what do these people do well you can learn a bit about machine learning you can learn a bit i just talked about that in my uh live class a week or two ago where you could learn about machine learning for free Okay, um, but that's a big task. There's no question about that. I mean, if you have the due diligence, you, you you can you can do so. It is a big task. If you're a family, you know, and you got to take care of your family. You don't have the time for all these things. After telework surge, federal buildings remain largely empty. Could you believe it? The amount of empty. I mean, this is crazy. Check this out. It depends on 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 the type of building and, and so on. Type of uh, you know, look, just look top at the, at the bottom, Social Security Administration and the Housing and Urban Development offices were both at 7% occupancy. The Small Business Administration was at 9%. That's embarrassing. In my opinion, in my opinion, you let me know. You take those buildings and you simply get rid of them. You do something with them. You, you utilize those buildings. Okay, the, the, Your tax dollars shouldn't be going to a building that's 90% empty. I mean, that is just, that's terrible. You might as well just have those people working from home. They're probably not, in many cases, not even doing much. You know, whatever. This is interesting. Cali Express by Flippy. Our friends Flippy the robot and Flippy 2... Well, now they have an entirely automated restaurant. Cali Express, the world's first fully autonomous AI-powered restaurant, is set to open in Southern California. This is going on now. It's not going on, you know, in 10 years from now. It's already happening. And when it comes to fast food, if you can go to a place that's going to serve you the same stuff and you know somebody didn't step in it before they gave it to you, there was no extra ingredients in yours and maybe just maybe it's a little bit cheaper because they don't have the human resources i love that would you go there what's your thought okay banks shed sixty thousand jobs in one of the worst years for cuts since the financial crisis so that's financial industry then we have this over one hundred thousand workers were laid off from tech jobs this year okay so we see that in tech, we see it in finance, other places as well. 
And what are people doing? You could like these are big, big changes. Let's connect them all. Illinois sees the tenth straight year of population loss in 2023. People don't want to live in these places. They're too expensive, they're dangerous, and the jobs just aren't there. People want to go where the jobs are. They're easier to come by. They can actually actively live a good life. I talk to people who live in very expensive places, cities, working, let's just say, you know, the median job, median salary, and they are constantly talking about the suffering they experience. That's not a healthy economy that shows us that we've got a very big issue because we should have shared prosperity. And that happens when there's a strong middle class. It's not coming from the top down where the government will say, you know what, shared prosperity, let me, you know, wave my magic wand, Harry Potter over here. It's not going to happen. That's not the way it works. They haven't done it. Look, Decade after decade after decade after decade, the situation has gotten worse. There's no question about that. The last year at this time, 85% of economists in one poll predicted a recession this year and that it was an uh, optimistic take compared with uh, the 100% probability of recession forecast two months earlier. This is going on. They said recession, 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 in their terms, by the way, not, not real terms. And yet, they're suggesting there is no recession, it's not going to happen, and everything is A-OK. -okay. Now, if they claim that there is no recession, that is actually a, a little bit positive, I would say, in a sense. It's worse in, in another sense. But businesses may start hiring more people because they're saying, hey, no recession. Oh, and they're telling us inflation's going down. Good news, right? Uh, but of course, it may give a... Um, false representation to people of what's happening. They might overspend and so on. What I need to tell you is that for a lot of people, they are going to be sidelined by what happens here because inflation isn't going to go down, at least in real terms, and you need to be prepared for it all. What I can tell you right now is the group that I have every single week, these are the most informed people that are getting the latest and greatest, the cutting edge information that in a video like this, I just can't get into. I try to touch on it here or there, but algorithms, all that nonsense, I break it down for two hours each session. Are you interested in getting access to me live? Hit that link in the description right at the top. Click, you read through, and you see if you're um, up to it. You got to be willing to to listen on the Sunday session, which is about building e-commerce businesses for the most part. Uh, you got to be willing to work. But those are the people that are going to be likely the wealthiest people in their family, the people that are able to help others, the people that probably will be the ones to hear the knock on the door when the tough times come because they know that those people are in a better circumstance than everyone else. That's the way this works. Did you enjoy the video? Don't forget, hit that thumbs up button. I do appreciate it very much when you do. Um, and uh, as always, hope to see you here tomorrow. Take care.